The supplemental unemployment insurance has long since expired, and yesterday both Treasury Secretary Mnuchin and Chair Powell talked about the need to do something, although what to do is not exactly clear. We welcome now an expert in labor economics and policy. Seth Harris served as Deputy Secretary of Labor under President Obama and then as Acting Secretary. So, Seth, welcome back. Great to have you here. So first of all, take us back to the, 600, the days of the $600 a week uh, a supplemental unemployment. That's long since gone. The end of July it went away. What was its effect as a practical matter? Some people were concerned it actually was encouraging people not to work. Well, this new study out of the San Francisco Federal Reserve Board tells us that that's not true, David, that uh, unemployed workers did not slow their job search, did not turn down jobs simply because they were getting an extra $600 a week. And the reason for that is that workers really understand their own home economics and they know that if they take a job, that paycheck is going to last longer than unemployment benefits would. So, you know, the average worker gets, according to the study, the average worker gets about $1,000 a week for an, on a two-year job. That's worth more than the additional $600 they were getting from the federal government. So it had no effect on people's job search. And we knew that, frankly, from other, uh, other data, other labor market data. There are slightly under 30 million Americans collecting unemployment insurance right now. And there there are only about 6.6 .6 million open jobs in the United States. So there's about one job for every four workers on unemployment insurance right now. That's the reason workers were not going back to work is there weren't jobs for them to go to. Yeah, I just want to be clear that study you referred to came out of the staff of the San Francisco Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve itself said, wait a second, we're not saying it's our study, but their staff came up with that. It didn't have much effect maybe on the downside, but on the other hand, did uh, taking away the $600 a week have much effect either? Because we continue to add jobs, right? Well, we are adding jobs at a very, very slow and declining pace. The economic recovery is slowing, and we are still seeing very high rates of layoffs um, that's what the, uh, the weekly initial unemployment claims data tells us about is people who are newly losing their jobs um, every week. That number is still in the 800,000 range just for state unemployment, another six or 700,000 in the special category for people who are self-employed or independent contractors. That is a record by a long shot. We've never seen numbers like that before in the history of counting unemployment claims. So the economy is still struggling. It is a very slow, painful recovery. And so we need to stimulate the economy. One way to do that would be with those $600 in supplemental unemployment benefits. Unemployed workers take that money, they turn right around and spend it. That's good for the corner grocer, for the local gas station, for landlords, for other people who get paid with that money. But there's a lot more that we need to do. And Chair Powell yesterday said we've made a lot of progress, but we still have 11 million people unemployed, which is an awful lot, uh, which raises the question you're pointing toward, which is what do you do about that? I mean, I, I think you've made no secret of the fact that you support in general by former Vice President Joe Biden. What would a Biden president presidency do to this, do you think? Well, uh, Vice President Biden has laid out in great detail his Build Back Better jobs program with substantial investments in middle class union jobs, uh, infrastructure jobs, manufacturing jobs, jobs in the care economy and education jobs, jobs that will help our economy become a more green economy to address the threat of climate change. Uh, that is really what is needed. We need to fix the tax system so that the wealthiest don't get away with what they're getting away with now, which is paying very little in taxes, and the middle class and working other working people are bearing the burden. Shift that burden, increase taxes on the wealthiest in our economy and wealthy corporations to fund a massive jobs program in a number of different sectors. That would be the way, not merely to build back to where we were, to, to build back to a fairer economy, an economy that's focused on racial equity, that shares the, doesn't just fund jobs on the coast, but also funds jobs throughout the United States economy in every state. That's where uh, Vice President Biden is, and I think that's where we need to go. From your experience in the Department of Labor, but also in general in the sector, is it demand that we need to have go up? Is it a practical matter the employer does not employ more people until they think the demand will be there for their goods and services? 
Yeah, I, well, we do need more demand, but remember that 70% of the economy in the United States is consumption. And that's people like you and me, but also unemployed workers and food insecure workers spending money. That's what creates the demand that makes the economy grow. So we have to build from the middle out, right? We have to put money in the pockets of the people who are most likely to spend it, not the people who are going to look for a tax shelter and put it offshore in the Cayman Islands. That's really the way that we get the economy to grow. We are suffering from insufficient demand in the economy right now. Um, that's because so many people are unemployed, so many people are underemployed. We see a very high rate of right. part-time workers, involuntary part-time right. workers. So that's the way we're going to grow the economy is with growth and demand. Seth, always good to have you on the subject of labor. That's Seth Harris. He's the former acting U.S. Labor Secretary under President Obama. 